Welcome to the Depth Chart Podcast, Sunday morning. After the South Carolina uh, game, disappointing, uh, infuriating. I, I, I don't know really. I mean, this is going to be hard to, this could be a tough podcast. I'm just going to tell you that right now. So uh, get ready. But uh, we're all, we're joined by Stephen who is our producer and does a great job running videos for KSR. I'm joined by Jay Dorch, my teammate, former starting outside linebacker for Kentucky. Uh, Steven, uh, uh, this wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for Port Royal, right? That's right. Uh, Port Royal Plants, a Kentucky proud product that has grown, processed, and manufactured in Kentucky. Because your mind and body deserve quality products you can trust, visit portroyalplants.com to learn more and try out their products with the summer months uh, or into the, the, the fall, definitely check out Port Royal Plants, CBD, natural uh, tick, mosquito, and bug spray. You know, we're still getting, still getting the, uh, the tailgating. Lots of people tailgating yesterday. You know, get some of that. Um, yeah, Freddie, uh, it, was a, it was a tough game yesterday. Yeah, it, it, was, it was very tough. Jay, I did everything but uh, draw uh, note cards for people on, on the pregame show yesterday about what was going to happen. Um, <laughs> you know, some people didn't want to hear it and, and that's fine, but I, I speak what's on my mind and, and I've been on this all week. It, it, it wasn't the fact that Kyra Sharon was the quarterback. What I was trying to say is even with <clears throat> Will Levis and even with Jeremy Flax, who Kentucky missed badly last night, by the way, this offense has not been good. It's not been efficient. It's not been, uh, it's not been good in situational uh, offense. Kentucky coming into last night was ranked 13th in the SEC in total offense with 368 yards a game. Not good. And Kentucky, after last night, hasn't scored more than 20 points, offensive points, in an SEC game. So I thought Kyra Sharon, for the most part, Jay, for a backup quarterback to come in for his first start was okay, was was okay enough. Kentucky around him just didn't play well. Let's just talk offense here because defense – Normally, this is a uh, we, we praise the defense podcast. We're going to get after them too. This was a total team meltdown. Uh, but before I kick it to you, Jay, I am man enough to admit and to apologize to the South Carolina fans, to the South Carolina people, uh, for making fun of them during media days and for uh, making fun of them being highly predicted. And for, for not respecting the Gamecock pro- program because they came into Kroger Field, beat Kentucky in just about every way a team can beat uh, a team, and earn the victory. Now, I will say this. This is one of the worst teams to ever beat Kentucky at Kroger Field during the modern Mark Stoops era. But still, South Carolina earned the win and deserves respect for that. So I apologize. I give South Carolina my respect. Uh, but Jay, this was a total systems failure for Kentucky offense, defense, special teams again. Uh, just not good. Just, just a bad performance by Kentucky and, and frustrating, but disappointing. I mean, with so much on the line and you had to be so good around a backup quarterback with Kyle Sharon. Kentucky didn't do that. And it started out with that first play of the game. And, and my simple tweet, Jay, was why? Why with 24 in the, in the backfield do you attempt that rever- reverse play, which ended up in a turnover, which ended up in a two-yard South Carolina touchdown to start the game off bad? You throw your quarterback out there who has never started uh, it, down seven points. Why, Jay? Can you explain to me the first play first play call of the game? No, I have to say I was uh, super disappointed in that. Uh, there's no reason <clears throat> to put your offense in that position. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but even before that, Freddie, it was evident to me that uh, there was just no juice on this team. I mean, there. I don't. I don't know what the deal is. You know, I just remember last year and year before, people like Bully just getting the getting the the team fired up on the sideline. You know, I was watching. You know, I was down at the Ole Miss game. And I was watching the Ole Miss sideline, and they were jacked up. And we were in that game and should have won that game going away. Um, but you just never saw any juice again on our sideline. And yesterday, starting the game, it was the same thing. And 
you know, as much as I love Scangarello and, and what he's trying to do with this offense with, with some limited capabilities on the line, especially uh, I'm with you. I mean, if you're going to do anything, throw a screen or just give it to Chris. Um, yeah. And looking at, at Kaya, um, I actually thought he was pretty poised based on what yeah. what um, South Carolina did. I mean, just being brutally honest, you know, our offensive line is right now is just not good. And missing flax is a huge deal. But you got to play with who you got. And you got to come up with a, with a way to do it. And But I just – I don't know. I just feel like – there's not much discipline. You know, we're still getting pre-snap penalties. Um, you know, three phases of the game, you're, you're losing all three phases. And, you know, it's so frustrating when you make mistakes in the kicking game. Um, and I know they didn't score on that punt block, but it just takes juice away, takes momentum away, and just continues to just shoot ourselves in the foot. Um, you know, defensively, you know, they, they played – decent for most part of the game um but you know again just a few big plays and there were some some technical things that happened especially on that screen that just shouldn't have happened you know and i know it's a young guy out there alex safari but you know when you're setting the edge i mean technically he did his job he set the edge but you can set it too wide and you can you can carry out the right assignment but you lose the play and he tried to push up field on the outside shoulder, his wide side of the field. Um, he should have just squared him up and pushed him back and just drug that out and let the inside pressure come in and clean it up. And it would have been fine. I mean, technically, he did it right uh, from a turn it inside. But, man, it's just frustrating when you do little things like that the entire game. Yeah, and, Stephen, you and I talked uh, after the pregame <clears throat> show. <laughs> uh I kind of I kind of saw this coming if you if you'll remember outside the office and uh, kind of played out how I saw it would play out and that's a combination of a lot of things the juice hadn't been there uh, too many sacks Kentucky give up what gave up why six quarterback sacks South Carolina had four sacks for the entire season going into Saturday and had six against Kentucky uh, I said on the show again that I thought that. Jeremy Flax being out was a bigger loss to Kentucky than than uh, Will Levis, and it turned out that that pretty much was right. Uh, but this offense, man, I mean, back to back procedure calls on a, on a senior offensive lineman in one drive. I mean, mental mistakes there, a critical drop uh, on a third down. But but here's Jay. Here's Here's something that that really uh, uh, I, I didn't agree with. Okay, you got when you have a, a, a rookie quarterback, right, and, and you have a new starter at right tackle, you don't want to go east west. You don't want to give the defense time to react and be athletes. You want them to be on their heels. I thought Kentucky did a pretty good job of that in the first half. Rodriguez was 16 carries, 97 <coughs> yards. And it was back to old Kentucky football. It wasn't this stretch stuff. It wasn't the the outside. It was straight up uh, gap runs. It was combo blocks. It was power. It was it was Kentucky. And, and C. Rob was having success, right? And, and the game was tied seven seven. And you give you gave South Carolina a cheap score. Second half, Chris Rodriguez, six carries for twenty nine yards. Six carries for 29 yards after going for 16 and 97 in the first half. That's not going to win you a football game. Agree that players around a rookie quarterback has to play, have to play better, and they didn't. But when you give the best player on your offense six carries in the second half, you're asking to get beat and South Carolina obliged. Yeah, it's that, almost that, that, that. Yeah, I mean, South Carolina comes out, comes out, get that quick score to go down fourteen seven. Some it seems like Kentucky panicked hey, when there was no reason to panic. That's give exactly. the football to twenty four, man. Yeah, that's it's exactly not hard. What I was ready to say. I mean, you you know, you're down seven and uh, you forget that twenty four. The more you give him the ball, <clears throat> the 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 better he gets. You know, especially the second half, he just. 
he wears people down. He gets stronger. And I just you can't panic panic down seven. Um, and it feels like we just took ourselves out of our game plans and we we tried to just start playing that catch up ball, which that's not that's not what our offense is built to do. And we don't have the offensive line like we've had the last several years. And I, you know, I don't know if we've talked about this yet, but I've been thinking through this offensive line and and how much we've missed Schlarman, obviously. But, you know, Wolford last year, the one thing that he did that I just totally disagreed with is he got away from playing his young offensive lineman every chance he could get. You know, Schlarman always got those young guys in there. And we all know there's a huge difference between live snaps and snaps in practice. And so he, there was no developing. He had the five guys on the field, and that's who he was going to play, and he played them and, until the whistle, last whistle blew. And so <clears throat> we, we walked into this season, and, you know, Dare leaving was a big loss and unexpected. Uh, we thought left tackle was locked down with him coming into this year. But now it's showing that those young guys and the way Schlarman – uh, taught and 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 developed these guys was totally lost last year and now we're a year behind. Yeah, we um, and we got talent, but you know nobody's starting in the same position they started in last year. I mean, it's just it's tough. We're in a bad yeah. spot. Yeah, no, I've, I've that's well documented <clears throat> with me. I've had a serious problem with the way Wolford handled things, and I've written about it and talked about it uh, at length. That you know, especially a tackle. Before the season started, Jay, I said this team will go as far as the offensive tackles take them, right? And, yeah. And now you you ask Kenneth Horsey to move from guard, which he's been a longtime starter, kick him out the tackle. That's un, that's unselfishly what he's done, but he he's not a not a pure left tackle. And then Flax was playing really good before he got hurt, and now he's out. And it's just you know that, that that's why I thought it was unrealistic to expect Kentucky to, to, you know, against South Carolina was Kentucky was bad offensively. I mean, we need to talk about that with Levis yeah. and Flax. You take mm-hmm. Flax out of the equation. That's really bad. Yeah. You take Levis out. That's even worse. Yeah. So I, I, the first half, Jay, I mean, C rod 16 for 97, that, that, that worked, right? I don't know why Kentucky went away in the second half from the run game. You can't panic in that situation, uh, especially with South Carolina that has a tendency to turn the football over. But start throwing on first downs with that offensive line, you, you're going to get a lot of second and 14s, second and, and, and 15. Not just, and, and that not throws just, you off. You're done. At that si- When you get to second and 14 with a rookie quarterback and a backup tackle, you're done. You might as well say we're going to punt. Yeah. Okay, let's punt. We have Kentucky averaged 36 yards per punt against South Carolina. Jay did not flip the field position. The, the, the Gamecocks absolutely kicked Kentucky's butt in the third phase. Block punt, missed field goal, another missed field goal. Uh, averaging 36 Poor yards. Poor snaps. I mean, on and on. I mean, this, this, this third phase for this team is not good at all. And uh, you add all that together – and it was an all systems failure, and and, and I, I could sense that Mark Stoops was not happy, and he shouldn't have been happy. Uh, and and but again, what are you going to do? I mean, it's just uh, it was too much to overcome. But I thought again, you know, with twenty four back there, how in the hell did he only have six carries in the second half? That that blows my mind, Jay. Yeah, I'm but, with you. They you know they started taking. Uh, shots downfield, not even uh, short to intermediate passes, but yeah. shots downfield, which obviously requires a little more time, which we knew South Carolina was going to pin their ears back and send the house and and make Kaya beat him with his arm. And, and like you said, I mean, C-Rod got 97 yards first half, only gets six carries second half. So we take long shots down the field on first downs. And now we're second 10, second 12, whatever it is. And man, you just this is not a this is not an offense to play from behind the chains. No, not at all, not at all. I mean, you know, we talk we talk about the punt block. I mean, little things like that, the third phase, and, and you get out of rhythm like that. Kentucky right now, Jay, is 129th in the country. I didn't know there were 129 teams. <laughs> I thought it was 126, but I guess they've added a few. 
129th in the country has given up 25 quarterback sacks. Yeah. 113th in the country with 42 tackles for loss allowed. How do you get tackles for loss with 24 in a game? Is this he's out of the game and you start going, uh, uh, you start going sideways and still straight ahead with, yeah. with an offensive line that, that's, that's taped together, uh, with duct tape because of injuries, et cetera. The best thing that they did was go straight ahead, go north and south. You take yep. the, you take the thinking away from it. You take the, uh, you take the uh, advanced scheme away from it, and, and you just you have double teams. You run powers. You do what Kentucky did in the first half, yep. and, and that's how you have success. And you can't go away from that. I thought Jay, with with the way the first half w- went, with 16 carries for Rodriguez for 97 yards, I thought we were going to see a 30 carry night for 24, right? And yeah. I would have been okay with that, and so would have he, right? And, and I just. I don't, I don't get the battle rhythm of this offense. I, I don't get – I don't understand it yet. And, you know, I've been I've been kind of asking a lot of questions and, and talking, bouncing around the subject, but it's not been good with the, with Roder- with uh, uh, Levis and Flax. So, I thought P- the players around – I thought Kyle Sharon for a backup rookie quarterback played okay. I yeah. thought he played good enough to win the football game. He had two drops that were crucial. Yeah, I that thought third, that third I, yeah. down play when he rolled out and threw it. That was a that was a, yeah. yeah. I, I thought Sharon played good and played winning football for a backup. Yeah, everybody around him. No, I can't say everybody because I've not, <clears throat> you know, totally watched the tape in depth yet. But didn't play good enough around him, including the defense. And there were some uncharacteristic missed tackles, gave up explosive plays. But I also wrote about this, Jay. As good as this defense has been, there's going to be a game where you give up a, a few leaked explosives, you give up a few plays, and you're going to have to rely – and that offense and special teams are, will have to bail you out a little bit because yeah. you've been so good for so long, right? And that's what happened on Saturday. The, de- the defense gave up some uncharacteristic plays, leaked explosives <laughs> for touchdowns. Uh, Marshawn uh, – uh, the running back for uh, South Carolina is a good is a good running back, but still, at some point in time, you're going to have to have that offense in third phase kind of help you out a little bit, and that didn't happen. Kentucky takes a second straight loss, and this was a tough loss, Jay, because uh, in my opinion, I mean, Kentucky was better than Ole Miss, and, and we talked about that last week. Kentucky was much better than South Carolina, but not on Saturday night. And Shane Beamer and his annoying sunglasses got the win. And they have the bragging rights now. And that's going to be a hard pill to swallow. And that's why I apologized earlier because I've made a lot of fun of South Carolina. And, and you know, when you got to be big enough to – you got to be big enough to own it if you're willing to say it. And I am. But that, that, that last night's loss was inexcusable. I thought, I thought South Carolina outcoached, outplayed – out uh, hustled, out wanted the football game and came out with a victory. Yeah, I go back to when, you know, Eddie Grant scrapped the offense and and put Lim Bowden at quarterback and everybody in the world knew that he was going to run the ball and yet we still had success. And I I feel like you can do that with C-Rod if you just continue to feed him. And we just got out of our game plan, got on our heels and, you know, started taking shots and unnecessarily try, trying to, we're only down seven, <clears throat> trying to force it. You know, defensively, they played pretty sound for most of the game. There were some missed tackles. I mean, they hit, they hit him in the backfield a couple times and then he rips off, you know, 20, 25 yards or whatever. <clears throat> and I talked about the Alex Safari when, when he was, you know, they set the edge, but instead of squaring him up and, and being able to go inside or out to stop him or string it out. You know, he goes upfield, creates a huge lane. And credit to South Carolina, their two offensive linemen got downfield and got our linebacker. Yeah. I think it was Jackson and then I uh, can't remember the safety, but they they blocked it perfectly. And But I just go back to, you know, you all said it last week on the podcast, you know, you can't let one loss become two. And that's exactly what's happened. And I'm going to tell you right now, next week, they're probably going to see maybe the best quarterback they're going to see all year. Yeah. Um, And then they got another one coming and hidden hooker who might be the best quarterback. (laughs) Um, And 
So they we've not really seen anything yet. And Mississippi State is a great team yeah. on both sides of the ball. And we just missed another yeah. another great opportunity. We were in the game, you know, and but we again we just shot ourselves in the foot so many times uh, with with those pre snap penalties and block punt, fumble first play. Any juice we had at all was sucked out of the stadium at that point. I wasn't at the game. I was actually uh, at a wedding watching on my phone, and uh, <clears throat> I might have been told to be quiet a couple times at the reception. <laughs> um, but yeah, I wasn't spewing joy. Let's say that. And but guys, there was there was a time. I think there was like twelve minutes to go in the game, and people were filing out of the stadium. <clears throat> you know, just and they were only down ten. Um, and the, like you said, Jay, the energy in, of, in, in Kroger Field was, was lacking, I think especially after that first play. It just, just drained the entire fan base, it felt like. Yeah, and I feel bad for the fans in back-to-back -back weeks because they've done their job. The fans have brought the juice in Oxford and at Kroger Field on Saturday, and they, they, they deserve better than what they had on what was I've on the never, field Saturday. They deserve I've, better than, than what Kentucky played. Freddie, you'll agree. I've never seen BBM better. No, I've not. I've, either. Ne I've never seen it better. And I don't I, either. I credit them so much. Yeah. Um, and they do deserve better. They deserve yeah. better. And this is, you know, one thing that's concerning, well, one of many, Jay, is, is Kentucky is uncharacteristically an undisciplined football team. And that's something we've not seen with Mark Stoops. And that's got to be just <laughs> driving him crazy crazy yeah uh, you know and, and he said after the game he said he yelled at everybody he yelled at the coaches yelled at the players yelled at himself uh because i mean that, that's not a mark stoops team at, with with all those penalties you know on third down 25 percent on third down jay kentucky was three out of 12 but a lot of that was mm -hmm. because they were so far behind the chains yeah. And how do you get behind the chains? You don't give the football to Dag on number 24, let him go north and south, and don't put the game on your rookie quarterback. And that's that's what happened. So I think we've fallen in love a little bit with <clears throat> with our playmakers on the outside. Yeah. You know, and, and it's it's sexy and it's awesome to to see what Barry on and, and Tavion and, and Dane Key have done on the outside. But gosh, man, I just, you know. When you got 24 back there and you got you got Dingle and you can hit some – I mean, uh, there were some plays. He was wide open. Yeah. Um, and, of course, either he doesn't have time, you know, or the play breaks down and, and uh, we take a sack or what have you. But I just – you're right. I mean, typically a team takes on the personality of Stoops and, and of the head coach, and we've done that for several years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but this this is uncharted territory for this modern Stoops uh, football teams to 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 play like this. They never it beat is. themselves. No, no. That's one thing Mark Stoops teams have, have done is is not beating themselves and made other teams beat them. And now I'm at. <clears throat> and again, credit Ole Miss. You credit <laughs> South Carolina, but they were gifted quite a bit of uh, advantage. Yeah. Whether it be play call, just questionable play calling on offense, and that's just not this game. That that's for me. That's been an issue. No, every game from the beginning. I mean, yeah, I've not seen game. rhyme or reason. I've seen the total lack of efficiency from the offense on, on situational football, two minute scenarios, red zone <laughs> offense has not been good. Turn the football over, uh, uh, pre snap penalties, just uh, sloppy, very yeah. sloppy. Yeah, but but Stephen, you know what's not sloppy is or my dress pants and my blue jeans when I wear my KLW belts. Jay, I got to get you one of those, man. Yeah, man. Uh, I, yeah, I'm hearing all about them, I got to get some. Sweat. Yeah, I've got a keychain too with my name on it, and I got a belt with my name on it. Stephen, tell us more about KLW belts. Yeah, I saw the thing with the name on it. That was that was that's cool, crazy. right? They got them for a bunch of people, right? They're yeah, so yeah. Uh, uh, KLW belts are handmade here in the bluegrass. Take advantage of free shipping on all web orders. All belts are genuine leather, no synthetics, padding, or backing, just solid leather. Give them a call at 859-509-7816 or head to KW belts, uh, KLW belts, KLWbelts.com. I want to make sure I got that, got that right, Freddie. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah you guys, I want to ask you one thing about the, 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 the kicking game. I feel like Kentucky's leaving so many points on oh, the field, God. especially in the SEC play, uh, not being able to uh, get the snap, uh, get the hold, and, and get the kick. Yeah, no, you know, also uh, KLW Belts, you mentioned the depth chart podcast, you get 10% off and it's free shipping too. And uh, Tim and those folks do a great job. They'll work with you. Uh, give them a call because they're terrific. I love them. Uh, and I look pretty cool, Jay, in my belt. I just have I bet to tell you. you. Do. I mean, seriously. I bet you do. And, and I, I always like make sure my name thing, name tag still on there. So I'll <laughs> grab, you know. And then I kind of just like turn my hips a little bit so people can see my name. It's pretty cool, man. You got to get you one of those. I got to get one, man. Yeah. Well, listen, guys, I got I got to take off. I got to go to church. And all I, right, man, go to the Lord's for, house. Ask for forgiveness for yeah. Things I said last night. Go um, pray for an offense, man. Yeah, I, I hear you. I, you know, I'm 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 concerned about next week. I'll oh. just say it. Uh, I'm I'm scared of next week. I'm I'm past concerned. I was watch. I watched him. I watched him yesterday. Pretty solid. Yeah. Will Rod. Will Rogers is a very underrated quarterback. Yeah. Well, and, and I'm a big Zach Arnett fan, the defensive coordinator at Mississippi yeah. State. I think he does a tremendous job. Yeah. In that for in, in, in that strange defense that he runs, and he's got to be watching this film and and just uh, ready Licking to get on, ready to get on a plane to Lexington like yeah. right now. Yeah. So all right, all right Jay, man. Y'all have a great week. Appreciate all right, bro. it, right, Stephen. Man, I'm telling you. You made a great point. <laughs> the third phase has been so bad that Kentucky's not only left points or given points away, uh, but so many hidden yards. I mean, when you only average 36 yards uh, net punting, um, how, how many times did South Carolina start with advantageous field position? That That's the hidden yards, right? The block punt. Uh, missed field goal. Looked like the snap was low. The holder had to uh, Ruffalo had to wait, delay a second before he made the kick. It hooked and missed. Uh, I mean, that that's not good. Um, I don't know. I mean, how long how long do we have to see this? Before, I mean, it's been this way, uh, you know. It's just not been very good. Now, the return game, teams are doing what I would do. I wouldn't give Barry on Brown a chance to touch the football in a return game. That's what Kentucky does well. Kentucky had, had covered kicks well up until last night, and even that broke down. Uh, South Carolina had some returns that hurt hurt the Cats, and, and then you know it's just just all three phases were not good last night. Off, you know, ha- halftime I tweeted Stephen that the offense and special teams needed to serve the defense Gatorade, and then, and then the second half Carolina comes out and, and scores twenty points or however many they score, you know, and and it's just. But I, I thought I thought the whole time the whole season now we're six games into this that. At some point in time, the defense is going to have a bad game or a bad half or something, and they were due, as good as they'd be. If it wasn't for that defense, just think where Kentucky would be right now. Or four, sitting at four and two, that could easily be two and four without that defense. So that's what I was. I was most shocked that uh, that on the opening drive to start the second half that they would let South Carolina go seventy-five yards, and it felt like yeah. there was a couple third downs they just couldn't get off the field. Right. Very long as even. Yeah, third down was bad for the Kentucky defense. And, you know, that the defense is starting to get a little beat up too. Uh, DeAndre Square, I thought, was really good last night. Nine tackles and a sack. Uh, you know, I, he, he's dependable. Uh, I thought Deion, uh, Deion Walker was good forcing the action in the pocket, even if he did not get to the quarterback or, 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 or create a havoc stat. I thought he was good. Uh but when your when your defense is on the field so much, uh, you know you're going to have plays and 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 you're going to have a bad half. And, and I, I would it was bad time to have a not good half. But heck, they they've earned it. I mean, they've kept this team in in, in six games so far. Uh, just the offense, man. I mean, you know, I tried to da- to dance around the the subject for the last two or three weeks is. It's not very good, man. I mean, it, it, I mean, let's look at where they are today. And excuse me for flipping the page here. Total offense: three hundred fifty-six yards a game. That that's that's not very good. Rushing game still ninety-two yards. That's last in the SEC. Uh, defensively, still top five everywhere in most categories. So, I I think the big problem right now is is, is Kentucky offensively is getting beat and trying to do too much 
when we saw we saw Scangarello simplify in the first half, go north and south, true Kentucky football, and had success in a running game with 24. I would have ran Rodriguez 30, 35 times last night. He's fresh. He didn't get hit for four weeks. He can take it. I just do not understand why Kentucky went away from 24 in the second half. And it felt like he was constantly dragging two or three guys with him. It felt like this was the first game all season where the running game was was actually not bad. Um, right. I feel like with Rodriguez, we able to, to, to drag defenders with him, uh, able to pick up four or five yards uh, on, on most handoffs. Uh, you know, the, the, it, you mentioned the offensive stats and where, where Kentucky ranks in the SEC. You just never would have thought this going into the season. I mean, no. I know you didn't have Levis last night. Obviously, that hurts. But the wide receive wide, this is the best wide receiving group that I, I can remember Kentucky having. I've been watching Kentucky football my entire life. Uh, and, you know, obviously Chris Rodriguez in the backfield. It, this is not at all where I thought Kentucky's offense no. would be at this point in the season. I don't think anybody thought that there would be we would be talking about Kentucky's offensive struggles um, with that much talent. I know the offensive line. Uh, how, how much how hard is it to design this offense when uh, when the offensive line isn't getting good pass protection, isn't opening up those lanes? I mean, how, how much of this is on that and how much of it does Kentucky just need to be a little bit more creative? Well, I, I actually think it needs to be a little less creative and simplify and go north and south. I mean, we saw that mm-hmm. succeed in the first half, right? There wasn't anything fancy with Rodriguez running between the tackles. South Carolina was loading the box, eight defenders, didn't matter. The offensive line did a really good job of putting hat on hat and and, pu- and getting a push and getting a crease. Rodriguez, again, 16 carries, what, 97 yards? That was working, I think when you ask this offensive line to do more than that right now because it's so patched together with with new players all over at every position, take the think take it out of take the thinking, take the complication out of it and say, okay, put your hat on that guy. You put your hat on that guy. We're gonna go straight ahead. And if that doesn't work, then we'll we'll live we'll live to fight another series. But when you're throwing the football on first down and and with that many sacks, you know you're gonna get some pressure. With a rookie quarterback, you started. You st- then you go to second and fifteen. That series is done, over with, unless there's a penalty of some say, some nature. So that's why I, I thought Kentucky would have gone back to the the Lynn Bowden uh, mentality and just say, okay, we're going to run the football, we're going to run it straight at you, and stop it if you can. And did that in the first half, and and and. You know, you gave away a cheap, cheap touchdown on the stupid first pl- uh, play call of the game, or it'd have been seven nothing Kentucky. A bit different ball game, but I, you know, you get a little too cute, get a little too creative. You, get, you know, you run a reverse into the boundary on the first play. You, you give South Carolina the ball on the two. They score on the first play that they touch the football. You're starting the game behind Kentucky. Didn't panic at that point. Just kept running Rodriguez, which was good. Then come out at halftime and, you know, here we go. You, you know, we have <laughs> – I mean, it just it – yeah, I think there was a – to start that, that drive after, after South Carolina took that 14-7 uh, to 7 lead, I think uh, – Everything changed. Everything changed. Yeah. And it shouldn't have changed. Yeah. Yeah, and and, and immediately you saw, you know, I think two sacks on that drive. Um, yeah. And then one, I think, that made it like a second and 24. And you just – you kind of knew, like – they're not going to yeah. – not with the backup quarterback. They weren't going to make up 24 yards. No, um, no. No, you're not. And, and, and a night that your punter averages 36 yards per. You know, uh, you know, you have to marry all three phases together. So, if you're losing yardage on sacks, you're, you're starting the drive off behind the change. You know you're going to punt. South Carolina starting field position, what, 42 on the 36. 